When it comes to quote unquote intent in the context of the genocide convention, listen to what Israeli politicians and generals themselves have said. Cabinet ministers like Yov Gallant, the defense minister, who said Israel was fighting human animals and ordered a complete siege on the Gaza Strip, no electricity, no food, no fuel. Or energy minister Israel Katz, who said no electrical switch will be turned on in Gaza, no water pump will be opened and no fuel truck will enter until the Israeli abductees are returned home. Or heritage minister Amichai Ilahu, who said blow up and flatten everything in the north of Gaza and give that land to Israeli settlers. And if you think that's bad, just listen to the man in charge of Israel's government and military speaking on Saturday. You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible, and we do remember and we are fighting. That was Prime Minister Netanyahu invoking a biblical story in which the Israelites were told to exterminate, to literally kill all the men, women and children from an ancient tribe called Amalek. Not a great reference when we're debating accusations of possible genocidal intent, I think we can all agree. So my people, there is this popular quote that says, if you want to know who controls you, look no further than the person you are not allowed to criticize. That if you want to know who has the final saying in anything, just look at the person you are not allowed to say anything against. And I guess that is what Mehdi Hassan has found out the hard way. His show on MSNBC has been canceled. And according to speculations, it might be because of the way he did interviews with members of the Israelis authority that he was pushing them too far and his line of questioning were not that all comfortable and it puts the guests who are members of the Israeli government in a very uncomfortable position. And so the network felt like it was necessary to just cancel his show altogether, citing lack of viewership. But before we continue, and before I let you into my take on this whole thing, let's watch some of the interviews he did, and let's really understand if what he said was that too far or was just something that a journalist with brains will do. So, let's watch. True, Why I'm did your sure military spokesman on Monday point to a calendar in Arabic and say, these are the names of terrorists on them? That's false. Can you accept that here and now? I, 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 I'm not aware of the, uh, the, the incident. Let's put up the so image. We have the image. You have I, no I can't read Arabic. It doesn't help me. I have well, no comment. You, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the Does incident. your spokesman but, uh, read you, Hang on, I have a question, Maddie. You're a journalist. Have you made a professional mistake ever? Not no, intentionally, but have you made a professional I'm, I'm, mistake? I'm, exactly, and I own up to it. Have so you can made you ever, a mistake? So can, can, not, so can you own up to so, the mistake? So now? if I made, I've up? made mistakes, you've made mistakes, but there's a difference between making an honest mistake and between Hamas that deliberately exaggerates numbers Unders to suit its propaganda purposes. There's a huge Understood. difference. So it sounds like... It's like it's, so, it sounds, so, so hold on, hold on. You said propaganda. Can we just deal with your colleague Ophir Gendelman's tweet? It's still up seven days later. Why has it not come down? It's a Lebanese short film. We can put it on screen. It's not Palestinians faking their own injuries. Can we own up to that mistake and take that down? Is that not propaganda? I, uh, uh, once again, I understand that that was also a mistake. And, so why is it still uh, up seven uh, days later? I'll speak to Ophir about it if you like. I'll speak to Offer about it if you like. He's Great. a friend of mine okay. and a colleague. I quite like him. He's a good man. He's actually very effective. Why is he effective? Well, he's he speaks not, he's, he's mother tongue level that Arabic. Tweet, Mark. I, Mark, I agree. Got... He made a mistake. I must say this right. If these words that are being echoed by members of the Israeli government were said by any government in uh, Africa or by Putin himself or by the Russian government, we will see how the global community will come out 
to push back on 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 those words. We will hear Joe Biden and members of his administration calling it whatever they want to call it. There will be a lot of pushback, but since it is being said by members of the Israelis Authority, it looks like the European Union is not hearing what they are saying, or Joe Biden and his government are not hearing what they are saying. Everyone is kind of like giving the deaf ear and looking the other way. This just goes to show you that even though people recite equality, equality all the time, they are just but equal people in this world. That, they, that some people are more equal than other people. And that is a fact. Because if not, what would you call this ongoing onslaught in Gaza? If not, how can you possibly describe what is going on and how come people just sit quietly and watch, you know, helplessly? How come journalists or protesters who are just trying to let their voice be heard are being silenced? Their shows are being taken off air. Some of them got their contracts canceled. If you said anything that is presumed as anti-Semitic, if you said anything that a, 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 a person from the Jewish community or a Zionist said it was anti-Semitic, you will see how people will come after you. You will see the number of people that will come just to attack you for saying something like that. And if you even try to share your concern, to have some sympathy for the Palestinians, to say to the world that, let's hold on, let's, let's put everything to context, let's look at this whole thing from the very beginning. People from the Jewish camp, the Zionist community, will label you as Hamas sympathizer as Jewish denier or Jewish state denier. That is what they will label you. But if you ask yourself, if you really ask yourself, how safe are the Jewish people? How safe are they? How safe are the so-called Zionists? How safe are they? How destroying Gaza will make them more safer. How creating an apartheid situation or apartheid state in the West Bank has made them safe enough. How has that made them safe? They will never be safe if the Palestinian question is left lingering. They will never be safe if no one is willing to look into the Palestinian cause and to really be fair to the Palestinian people. They will never be safe until everyone in the region, from the Jordan River to the sea, is safe. And that is the only way forward. Now they can silence reporters, they can silence journalists, but the reality is the more they keep on, the more the Israelis hardliners keep on pushing the Palestinians to the wall, the more they create more pushback for themselves. To you guys out there, what is your take on the reason why Mehdi Hassan show was canceled? Was it because of his line of questioning and pushback? Or was it just because there wasn't any 
viewership on the show. People didn't actually like the show, as the broadcast put it. And please, don't forget to like this video, share this video, subscribe to this channel, because that helps us a lot, and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that, and like always, see you in the next one. Thank you.